Welcome to the Nexus Unloaded podcast. This is Will Crozier. And I'm Nikki Westcomb. We are the founders of Nexus Performance. Joining us on this wild ride is our heavyweight coaching team, ready to unleash the expertise to solve any problems in your journey to getting strong and jacked. Through our real world experience, we hope to break things down in a digestible, applicable and entertaining way. So pump up the volume and let's get into this. Welcome we back go. to the Nexus Unloaded Podcast. Uh, we've got a bunch to talk about today. We have a lot of announcements. A lot of, just a lot of stuff on. It's just getting to that time of the year. You know, January is kind of your sleeper period. You get past the, you know, over the holidays, um, getting back into training. A lot of that, like, you know, people in our circles, it, you know, you know, really stop training. Most corporate but, world start February. But They're yeah. all just cruise through Jan. Yeah, well, you go back to work on like mid Jan, and it's like, ah, you know, Fuck like it, just, well just wrap it up. Got to got to run an intro week as a <laughs> in the program, uh, back back to work style, and then you um, yeah, you start to hit your your proper volume and intensities come February and yeah, build into the year. Yeah, yeah, I like it. So uh, <laughs> periodizing your work year, and you deload every 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 you know, month or so. How many people have time off? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I fucking don't know. <laughs> That's right. I've got two weeks coming public up. Public holidays I'm very are just excited. harder days. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, well, public holidays are just days where people are like, oh, I'm going to do this. And I'm like, oh, I'm working. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sad days. Oh, well. No, it's good. We love it. Um, <laughs> we wouldn't be doing it if we didn't. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so we're actually talking about uh, how to evaluate exercise selections for, for new clients and just, and just around uh, exercise selection in general a little bit more today um, but first before we get to that uh, just a couple of, of things that are happening uh, for us like I said things are kicking off for the year uh, we've got the uh, the Gold Coast Novice Comp uh, number it, one number one for the year it is open registrations are open it is the 25th of May if you or any of your clients or friends or family or fucking anybody wants to jump in and have a uh a good intro to the sport typically, um, you know, just a fun day, uh, a no frills day just to jump in. Um, we're currently 16 weeks out. Yeah. Got to, you still got heaps of time. Heaps of time. So yeah. I've already got a couple of boys gearing up on the back end of, you know, just starting their pre pre preps kind of thing. <laughs> Taking it seriously. Yeah. I was actually the saying to yesterday, on. novice comp is kind of a little bit, I don't know. Sometimes like, yeah, the word novice is, I just think non-federated. You well, know, yeah, we've I, we've covered it before in yeah. relation to like how our thought process on it. Yeah, around like what that. a novice is. We I definitely think so non-federated is more like. Yeah, I think even because sometimes I'm like, you just people just want to even if they're not like technically a novice or or defined like you, you just want to do a comp that's just like I don't want to wear you don't a want all the stress and, and fuck around. You know, I just want to go and lift some heavy shit with my mates. Like, like I don't know. I think you should be allowed to do that. Yeah, right. And people take the word novice too seriously sometimes, as we discussed in that in that previous one. Yeah. So. But anyway, yeah, non-federated comps, uh, jump in, uh, 25th of May here on the Gold Coast, 4th of May up in Townsville is now open as well. So That's a little GPC. Bit, it's, it's GPC slash novice as well. Yeah. So there's the novice comp on the same day. Yeah. Or non-federated. Non-federated. So, <laughs> so you got your federated comp, which is yeah, GPC. Yeah, yeah. You need yeah. a membership. Yeah. And you're non-federated, which is Yeah. Fun. So if you want to go on and do a national level as in GPC Nats, um, that's obviously open. You can you can pay the registration fee for GPC. You can jump in. You can qualify. You can go on and, you can come and, and compete work, with work your way through the year, or you can yeah jump in the non federated side of it where you you don't need to wear uh, uh, any special gear or or uh, be a, a a a member of any federation mm. and, and do it as well. It's pretty cost effective too that option. It is. If you it just is. Want to throw your hat in. You're well, that's why we serious. decided to do both and just yeah. go, hey, like all right, you know, like just give people options because I feel like uh, there's a lot of people out there that just maybe want to do literally just that comp for the year. And then maybe they go and do their sport for, you know, like they're kicking off their footy or whatever. Yeah. Or they're doing something else. Well, we had Patty do that. He wanted to do the marathon. Mm. And then he was just like, well, I want to do the GC marathon, but I'll do deadlift for dogs as well because I kind of want to have a bit of fun with some strength so what, sports. And he's looking at doing the novice the no- comp. So so what's the point of him yeah, signing up to, to GPC or APL or, or, or any of these other federations. And, yeah, exactly. And just to do that one comp, you know what and I mean? So, and I think a big thing with that too, really quickly, is for the people who always sit there and say, oh, I'll compete when I'm XYZ strength or I'll do it when I'm this strong, go and do a novice comp first up. Don't even think about it. Register. 
last year I think we just coerced people into signing up in a nice way friendly in a friendly way I handed the iPad to people and said here's the form fill it out you're in yep um and they had the best time of their life like they loved it oh yeah bongers little little competitive like, action little friendly got in on it friendly like fire. It. it was yeah it was sick I like it all the boys had a great time all the girls just killed it had a great time so definitely look into that the other thing birthdays birthdays so we have both the Nexus Townsville first birthday and the Nexus Gold Coast second birthday. Yeah. Thanks on- for the, the way we do things. We like to make things easy. So we made sure that the, the birthdays were on the same day. February 14th, which is also Valentine's Day. So yeah. we buy, forget buy about you. partner your- membership. Yeah. I love it. Love Bring it. them to the gym. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the birthdays are, are on then. So that, that's, I don't know. I feel like it's gone fucking fast, eh? Um, it's wild. Yeah. Last year... For, well, for, for, you know, last year there was obviously, yeah, it was, it was the first year of Townsville. So there was just a lot going on, a lot of changes, a lot of attention up there. I'm not saying that we didn't do anything here. We did a lot here. Yeah, uh, we had heap on. Yeah. We had so much on. Um, but uh, last year was a lot of, a, a lot of internal changes as well, as far as like different services, we at different comps. This year uh, in Townsville, I think we're doing another two, if not three more comps over the span of the three. year. Like, so they've got deadlift dogs, the novice, and they're doing the Nexus games as well. So like, it's just, yeah, it's just big. It's, Even here on the GC, we've got two extra comps. Yeah. And which it, is massive. There's a lot happening, um, but like all, a lot of the changes are out of the way. So um, just big pushing on, on uh, you know. Yeah. I think this also gives us a really good chance to celebrate everything that we have become over the last two years because it's grown into, from the first time we walked through these doors and it was just, bare and concrete and mm-hmm. mats under equipment Roof that was dust. yeah was to now and to get to celebrate everything that is and has been yeah. um so we're doing a free open week across both gyms that week yeah and then activities yeah yeah we've got sub stores challenges uh yeah yeah challenge as well i was gonna say sub stores and, and recovery uh centers coming down I won't say names because it's different in each location yes but uh the yeah, the challenges as well. I don't know. Um, the challenge that we've got, yeah, obviously slightly different equipment, so it won't be like against each other for the gym because like the leg presses are slightly different. So, like, so we're uh, going to have a GC challenge, yeah. Townsville challenge. But they're the same challenge. So we have um, uh, at the moment uh, a leg press body weight MRAP. Mm-hmm. So for me, man, I don't know. <laughs> like the our leg presses are more the like the the pivot the squat press, presses, yeah. the squat presses, which don't really have like near as much friction as a like a a runner's like typical leg degree. press, uh, which means that they are a bit easier in terms of like no no load. no no it's way harder than Townsville. <laughs> Whatever Townsville guys get, no, they harder. got a Cybex one, so it's 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 a pivot <sighs> one as well. So okay. it's, it's pretty similar, but they are different brands. So I mean, like yeah, you can't really go one for one. Uh, same with the yeah other stuff in there, but um. Uh, so they will be separate, but I don't know how many do you reckon you could get out at a hundred kilos, 105 kilos. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'd be there for fucking ever. No, nah, no. Nah. Well, I think I haven't written down 60 seconds, reps, but no. I think it is, I think it is 60 seconds. Oh, it is 60 seconds. Yes. Correct. Cause yeah. otherwise, yeah, you could get about a oh, thousand. I reckon. Honestly, in 60 seconds, I'd gas out by about, <laughs> nah, even my sets, of the, my sets of 12 at the moment are going for about 60 seconds. Yeah. Time under tension. Yeah, but much heavier. Yeah, so like three and quick. a half times the weight. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fuck, I don't even know. Eh? I wouldn't even want to try and guess. Like at least, I would say if I got anything less than like, because it's got to go full range. Yeah. There's so we be... want good reps. Well, so we're going to say... set a limit. We're going to like, you can't go like knees to chest because some people literally can't get there. Um, you know, so we're going to have to like just set like a, almost like a squat depth type, mm. you know, parallel. If like... that's the case, if we're just going to parallel. And people actually, people can manipulate it with the angles of their legs and shit. Like, put your legs a little bit higher, or wider. So we're gonna. If I was to do that, I could put my feet at the top because <laughs> yeah. I can reach. Yeah, yeah. And if I'm going a parallel, I got at least sixty to seventy reps. Poor George is sitting, you know, having to do full reps. <laughs> Has to get the, the um, <laughs> extender things out yeah, for them yeah. to sit in. Um, and then the upper body one hasn't no, been we'll cemented to... yet, so we won't announce that. Yeah, we will have to quantify the yeah the. Rules we'll create more, more rules around it for each gym location. Yes. But the winner of that also then gets a week free gym access. So, you know, you you can bring 
we're doing open gym for that whole week. So bring your friends for free. Bring your mum, your brother, sister, dad, granddad, if he wants to come and have a boogie. Bring everyone. Yeah. Anyone at all, really. Um, and then if you win one of the challenges, you get a week free gym access. Yep. So that's even more incentive. Plus, we're going to have sub stores and recovery centers coming on in throughout mm-hmm. the week. We'll have bigger events on the Friday, which should be the 16th, I believe, the date, 16th of Feb, because the Wednesday is the 14th. Yep. Yep. 16th, 17th on the Saturday, we're going to have a bigger event as well. Both the gyms will have their strongman conditioning classes going. They're also going to be free for that day. We have a great amount of things happening. So <laughs> a lot of stuff. So much stuff. Plus probably Coming stuff that we'll just, we'll just do on the week and, and kind of. We'll honestly probably just randomly throw shit up on the Instagram and be like, ah, oh, today's this. Yeah. <laughs> Come and have fun, please. No, I'm excited for this year. Uh, like I said, the birthday seems like it's coming around really quick. The two years here and the one year out there. And it's just, well, I already said, there's already heaps more planned, but like, it's just, it, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm really excited. Oh, this year, this year, I reckon fucking good shit. Like the cogs happen. have fallen into Watch place. Watch closely. Um, yeah, the, you, the, was, sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was going to say, have you got anything else on it? No, not on the birthdays. I'm good. Have you got any cool stories for us? Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my, well, as people know, I've been kind of stepped away a little bit from powerlifting specificity at the moment in my training. Uh, there were just some issues around like my knees were just being a, a bit of a bitch. Uh, just couldn't, couldn't work out exactly some, uh, some ways forward with them. And it was starting to really get to me uh, and just annoy me as far as like training just felt it was like one step forward, one step back, one step forward, one step back and just kind of spinning the wheels a little bit. Um, I just needed a little bit of a change just for the interim period before I can get back and, and be willing to grind through that, that mental again. Cause mm. I, yeah, I want, I want to enjoy training. But when I think about it, fuck you, you, first of all, you get the best results when you enjoy training, but I, I just, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't. Yeah. Um, so we did a full podcast on that too. Yeah. So people were like really interested in listening to that a few episodes ago, but it was definitely worth a listen. Yeah. So yeah. So training has changed quite a bit. I've been thrown in. A lot of a lot of just different styles of training. Mm. No particular goal with it other than to enjoy it, than to than to, just to learn some new stuff. Uh, it's been about oh, I say I keep saying about ten years, but honestly, it's probably a bit longer since I've done like some power movements, as in like cleans and and pulls and and stuff like that. I can't do like full cleans and stuff because I can't get into the squat without the knee kind of being a little bit pissed off, which is literally the point of doing this stuff so uh, i've been doing kind of like uh regressed versions of them um but yeah i haven't done that stuff in a long time uh and one of the other aspects that we've thrown in is just a, a bit of resisted sprint training so i started off by doing the hill sprints it's um, been my favorite viewing every week literally <laughs> well i haven't been putting it up so no, mickey puts it I know, up on your account on the, you i know i know like... uh, <laughs> but uh yeah we started on the hill because i basically said to myself um I don't want to go out and buy like this. It's it's like going, it's like it's like the powerlifting kids who like go out and buy the SBD knee sleeves before they can squat 100 kilos. You know what I mean? It's like just SBD knee sleeves, A7, yeah, the whole mortis, the whole gear, you know, like the headbands, SBD, all the, yeah, everything. And then wild. they just yeah, and they've spent a grand before they've started the sport. And I'm just like the sprint thing. I just I could see myself doing that if I fucking hated it because like the whole point was enjoying it, right? Um, so I started off and I'm like, I'm not going to buy a sled, I'm not going to do or, a, you know, different, you know, invest money into this unless I am I'm, I'm sure that I'm going to continue it. Uh, so I did the hill sprints for three, four weeks, four weeks, I'm pretty sure, mm. um, just on our driveway, which is about 10 meters, but it's a driveway. So it's not perfectly flat. You're not really like it's, it's Mount been, Everest of driveways. Yeah, it's steep as well. Yeah. Yeah. But it has also got like little, like it's on a slant, slightly sideways and stuff. So it's not really ideal for, for performance. No. Um, Often you catch a pebble and kind of like half fall in your face, test your uh, reaction time as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I made it through those four weeks. I was actually loving it. There was a bit of uh, mental games with it at the start. I was a little bit worried about it and thought, fuck, you know, I can't do this. I've been telling myself that for the last 10 years. But uh, And then I kind of, yeah, I enjoyed it. I'm like, fuck, this is sick. So uh, I bought the sled. Sick. I've been going down to the the kids soccer slash cricket park down the road from us Mint. just to fucking flex on them a bit. 
And <laughs> they see this absolute gorilla sprinting with a run. sled. And when I say flex on there, just, just laugh go at me. hit up one of the kids and be like, hey, man, can you just jump on this for me? <laughs> Saves you taking your own weights down. I've been loading up to 30 kilos, which is all right. That's a small child. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. I think the parents Dude. are going to start to question if you're sprinting with their kids in a park, but. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm sweating badly <laughs> during it, you know, so maybe not a great look. But. um. Yeah, been measuring out roughly 20 meters, uh, loading up 30 kilos and just trying to just figure it out. I still can't get it perfect because my well, my knees limit kind of a little bit of the position that I can get in, but um, also just fucking haven't done it in a long time. Yeah. Um, like This a, is what, week two? No, this is week three of the sled. Especially when I was up at like 120, like, you know, you get the whole waddle walk going and <laughs> you don't really rotate very well. So to... Like side I'm a fair bit lighter now, so it's, so it's not as bad as what was in the, in that regard, but uh, still not great at running. You know, like there's a lot of things moving, probably not exactly how they should be. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been fun again to to learn because I feel like when you're a kid, you don't really learn. You do it unless you. I think when you're young, it's. I think it comes from less about being. I think it's. I was having this thought the other day with something else, but it was less about being a kid. It's more about being a bit naive. Yeah, because you don't know. Yeah, like I remember when you like when you first start training, you pretty much will just flog yourself and do like the most random shit because you just don't know. Well, it's not training; that's life. No, yeah, yeah, but yeah. that's yeah, that's everything. But like yeah. training related as well. Like you just do it because you kind of don't know not to do it. When I did bodybuilding, I went and did sprints. Actually, like, I remember in I Kansas used to run when I was sprints. doing calisthenics all the time. Mm. I only stopped running once I was like, no, powerlifters don't run. I quite literally said, no, powerlifters don't run and stopped entirely. And I was like quite a good runner. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do an episode on this in the future. But yeah, it, yeah you, can, you can definitely talk yourself in the fucking rabbit holes, that's for sure. Oh, absolutely. Tell yourself you can't do something, you can't do it. Um, but yeah, you know, it's been, it's been fun. Um, every week I look at the video. You know when you first start squatting or whatever, you're like, you, you do a squat and you're like, oh, shit ass. And then you watch it. And sometimes even set to set, like you, you correct little things. And then week to week, you correct bigger things. And then that's what I feel like I'm at. Because like yeah. I, I watched the video and I'm like, fuck, that's how it's been in last week, even though it's still like not great. That was me with my front squats on <laughs> yeah. Sunday from, you know, this is my second week in. Yeah. Week one, I was hating life. Mm. Quite literally nearly threw in the towel. Yeah, if it wasn't for us having a quick chat about <laughs> it and being like, okay, let's yeah. just see what we can play yeah. around with, and yeah. I kept on trialing and trialing and trialing, and then come back in week two, and I was like, no, nah, I'm going to become really good at this. Yeah, fuck, they were like chalk and cheese from week one to week two, twenty kilos up. Yeah, they're not perfect. They're, they're not they're, perfect they're, by any means, but it's massive progression on the first week, and at the end of the day, it's just if you can just keep stacking up wins like that. Yep, from the sprinting, front squats, whatever it might be, whatever it is, just remove barriers. Yeah, in your head. yeah. The 100 kilos coming this week, I heard, on the fronts. Oh, uh, well, i got a deload. Doesn't matter. I'm allowed to, I'm allowed to do <laughs> That's what one. Coach said, buddy. I'm allowed to do little... one hardy, heavy set. <laughs> um, and then I have to do back downs. So that might actually genuinely be the case. I might do 90 to 100 for the top set and then just back it down and do a few skill sets. Yeah. Nah, cool. Well, yeah, I won't be here. I'm down in Melbourne. I'm going to Melbourne uh, this week. I'm going to, I'm going, to film, going to film with... Uh, well, I'm actually going there for music. I'm going to two different concerts on consecutive Thursdays, and then I thought, fuck it. You know, I'm going to stay in Melbourne and have some fun, do some stuff when I'm down there. So I'm jumping oh. in with Eugene. Yeah. What uh, else are you doing in Melbourne? I'm filming with filming heaps. with. Well, we got a whole weekend where I'm literally just staying at the, the Gambaru HQ with, uh, with Eugene uh, and going to be filming uh, a, a ton of – Cool content. We've got some cool ideas. Um, some with uh, Anna Wish, who is a gymnastics coach, also another Gambari coach. So she's coming in probably to teach me some gymnastic-y stuff yes. uh, or at least attempt to. So Stay there'll be a video. A video we'll be doing muscle-ups. <laughs> well, actually, I wouldn't be averse to that one. I think it's going to be more like handstands and stuff. You I could think. probably do a ring muscle-up, I reckon, before a bar. You reckon? You'd be better at it, yeah. You're the calisthenics king, so I trust I you. I reckon you'd be better at just your ability, you'd be able to manipulate. I've done bar it a ones more. before. I've, I just fling up. Yeah, the bar ones are just a strength thing. But yeah. like, I reckon you'd be able to do stricter ring ones. Mm, yeah, well, he does have them. But I yeah. mean, yeah, I don't know if I believe you. <laughs> no, I, reckon, I generally think you'd probably be able to. Okay. Well, yeah. Bar ones are pretty easy once you're strong because it's just a power based movement. Yeah, the handstand thing, if she gets me to do that, I'll be. That'd I don't, be interesting. 
I definitely won't be able to do a real handstand, but I don't think that's the goal. The goal is just to like have an entry point and figure it out and, and film that and You've give other people ideas. Overhead movements. I have been working on overhead movements, but like I still can't like, you know. Get overhead. And I mean, yeah, it's just different being upside down. <laughs> I oh, don't know. I yeah, don't hate, you know what I, mean? I couldn't handstand. That was like one of the things I could not do back yeah. in the day. Yeah, so regression to that, whether it's like a, a pikey thing or using uh, like a foot support, like a war one, like they're doing yeah, the CrossFit sick. boxes and stuff, like something like that. And then I'm going to get her to do some um, powerlifting stuff. So we'll probably max out uh, as you do. Yeah, you that's know? actually exactly what you should and, do. Yeah, <laughs> progression. <laughs> <What> um, <laughs> yeah, so we'll work up, hit some heavy stuff. It's not like she doesn't do squat mission. No, of it's just uh, uh, not in the way we do uh, for powerlifting. So yeah, might might take a sneaky pair of wraps down. Uh, you know, everybody, everybody loves a, a fresh, never used rats before video. So, uh, <laughs> That's evil. yeah, we might, might get that going as well. I'll bring, I'll at least bring a friendly wraps. I'll bring like some, some softer ins ones or something. I'm not going to like go down and chuck some strangulators or something on that. They'll just make it cry. Get the thing. <laughs> that won't be the most popular video. Least resistant. Gymnastics cry, <laughs> coach cries. <laughs> just, yeah, clickbait. No, but, um. Yeah, I think it should be some really good filming. Uh, I'm also going to go see Brandon uh, for some Ollie video type stuff. I saw a video of Mitch Hooper, World's Strongest Man, recently learning how to power clean. And yeah, uh, and it was a really cool video that he did. And I was like, man, I should do something like that. Because, like, I've been, I'm, I haven't done power cleans yet. Like, I'm... Um, I'm still like on the baby movements of Ollie Lift. So like if he can if he can like wing it and show me and again, just a good video on explaining like how to get to that. And Brandon's been the one that's doing your programming for this stuff at the he's moment. Been, he's, been he's been helping you with out the, with yeah, it, with like all stuff. the discussion. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, that's sick. Yeah. So um That'll be a cool video. Yeah, that'll be a cool video. And then I've also just like tried like nearly pretty actually, I'm pretty sure every single day I'm there from Thursday to Thursday, like we've got something penciled in. Uh, I'm also doing a uh a seminar at Ballarat, uh, Stronghold Ballarat. So it's a gym out there. They um, with the Yeti, yeah, with Anthony. Uh, roped him into it. I literally just messaged him and go like, "Hey, do this with me," and he did. <laughs> so I wasted his Sunday. Tough discussion that was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, we're going to Ballarat. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, so I pulled him along, and we're going to run out there. Scott Bench deadlift seminar, similar ones that we run in here. Yep. Uh, so six hour. Roughly two hours on each lift, just going through a bit of theory, bit of prac, bit of hands-on, bit of demos, bit of all that stuff. First one we've done in, fuck, when was the last one we ran up here? Oh, in Townsville. just after deadlift for dogs. <clears throat> so not, not quite That was the year, hypertrophy but... workshop that we ran. Yeah. We do have one coming up in March. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that one, that one here is actually free. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm excited for that. By the time this is out, you know, it's going to be, done but mm. um so there's no point saying sign up but yeah. uh it's i don't know i'm keen for it oh we can it, talk about how it goes when you come back for the next one yeah it's uh i don't know first time doing a like a presentation workshop thing in, in a you know a while as you said like i don't know what that is 17 months something like that mm. so keen to like brush the rust off and almost you know use it as a, a bit of a run into to our ones here and the rest of the year i think i've got a few planned so yeah we've got quite a few so yeah lots coming we keep saying there's lots coming up for the year, but we genuinely there, mean it. Like it's yeah, not there, as if we're just saying it. The, the only other thing with the sprint training is um, that uh, I wanted to throw there. Like I said, I do it at the soccer slash yeah. the kids field um, because it's good grass and even surface, not because it's a kids field. <laughs> and uh, and uh, did run into an interesting lady who, who lives on the water there. Um, All right. Walking the goats. She just, <laughs> just, had a baby, just had two baby goats. There's two, yeah, I don't know. Like, like, like miniature goats or re- legitimate goats, but they were just I think babies. they were just babies, I think. <laughs> That's wild. I don't know, but they were they were probably the size of like a, like Sammy, like a small dog. Size of a Sammy. That's a good measurement of you. That's a unit of measurement, I yeah. reckon. Yeah, yeah. Times and uh, maybe maybe a touch taller, but, you know, like, yeah. And uh, it's just like, I don't know, just letting them roam. Had them on like the, the you know, those long dog extender leads? Yeah. When it comes out and then the she reels them back in. The worst dog leads possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but they yeah, but they're goats. They're not going chasing down ca- cars or whatever like a dog is. Like they, 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 they won't do much. I wonder if you could train goats. Fucking know if you could. Did she make them sit? No, they were just they were pretty busy eating grass. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're just paid to look after the grass. I don't and know. And that's why they, you have them to thank for the grass. But she told me, I'm like, oh, that's, that's pretty cute. And then she's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah I walk them out here every morning and night. I just thought it was, yeah. That's sick. Yeah, I don't. 
I've heard of goat stories like down in, I think Zach actually said once that there was a goat near him down in Melbourne. There but, used to be um, a goat near me in Melbourne too. Maybe it's just Mel- it's Mel- <laughs> it's a Melbourne thing because like more goat especially more out to the outskirts where Zach and me are from. Yeah, I think Zach's closer to Dandenong He's- than I was, and I was like Eltham Research, which is like pretty bushy. Yeah, like I lived on five acres when I lived in Melbourne. Yeah, in the middle of like the outskirts, so like pretty- went to the goat breeders and picked up your goat. Well, no, we had horses, but. Yeah, there was, oh. we didn't have them on our property, but there was a random, like a property down the road that was set on about an acre and they had a goat mm. and you could come up to the fence and pat it. Yeah. They had a cockatoo as well. I don't know. The way she treated these, it was like pets. They like probably, it wasn't like a goat oh, as in like. They probably are. hundred yeah. percent. Well, I think this person on the acre property literally would use it as a double win because he got a goat and he also had his lawns mowed for free. Yeah. 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 So it like doubled down as a benefit to him. Yeah. hundred percent. Nobody wants to mow. No. Nah. So he just had his goat strolling. Yeah. Well, there used to be Gary the goat who used to travel around Australia with his, mm, with yeah, the comedic yeah, yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. And they would just do videos and stuff. Yeah. That was a rich goat. Had a lot of YouTube views. He was a very popular goat. Yeah. <laughs> Probably kicked off the whole goat saga. Yeah. <laughs> but let's, yeah, let's get into it a little bit. Uh, we've been going a bit, but. Um, uh, to remind you, the topic is how to evaluate exercise selection for a new client or as someone who may just need some new exercises in general. So like you, yeah, even with, more of an experienced training. But uh, yeah, so exercise selection is not a new topic. It's uh, it's something that we do literally every day. Uh, when we're writing programs, we're picking exercises that uh, tick a particular set of boxes that, that you know fit right for a person. Uh, and there are a bunch of reasons why this could happen. Mm. Like you could... Uh, obviously like our job is to solve problems, movement problems a lot of the time with people, uh, whether it's they're a powerlifter and they've got to squat deeper, whether they're a bodybuilder and they've got to get jacked as fuck shoulders, uh, whether they're a sports player and they need to be more, you know, be able to do a certain movement pattern or get more explosive or get faster, yeah, like agile. coordinated in, in, a, in positions. Lots of different reasons. It could be like, grandma's coming in and she's got to get up off the couch or she, somebody's just got to enjoy training and you know they're they're overweight got to lose some weight hate training and, and just want to like do do some training enjoy training mm. so learn to enjoy training so there are a million different angles to come at this from and decision matrices that kind of play in the back of our heads when we're thinking about it i don't really have like a particular like if this then that type thing yeah a set uh, criteria yeah it's more like uh, okay. Here's a person. This is, this is like, there'll be a bit more to this, but like, it's just completely off the top of my head. Yeah. This is just, here's a person, here's their goal. Mm-hmm. Here's how they currently, uh, move, I guess. And their injury history and a couple of little things that come with that. Um, uh, this is what I've identified with all that as their, their weaknesses or their things to improve. And maybe they need to improve if they're a powerlifter, their squat bench and deadlift pattern. If they're uh, if they're in another sport, you know, uh, just more of a general strength kind of criteria that we're going to tick off. So like a lot a lot of a broader criteria and trying to improve all these things. Or if if there's if there is a lot, then the the most kind of pressing things, the the, the worst, the weakest links yep. in the chain. Uh, and then I'm going to typically from that identify like a pattern. Like okay, cool. Like we want to improve this person's squat, and then that's just like a category. That's just like a Okay, cool. Like squat, and you would know, and uh, and I know from working with heaps of people in commercial spaces, like complete beginners that don't have a lot of knowledge in fitness, that want to be in fitness. If I said to a person, "Go do a squat," the first thing they do is walk over to a barbell, put it on their back, and start doing squats, which isn't wrong. But I'm just all I'm saying is, like in people's heads, a squat is that. There, yes. There's this, yeah. It's not a pattern. It's not a movement. It's not. It's, yeah. To them, it's an exercise. It, it's just the barbell squat is is literally the only squat that exists, mm. right? And so, like, that's how we've got to avoid thinking as coaches and go like, okay, I want to improve this person's squat pattern. Realistically, the difference between them all is probably less important than uh, than we make it out to be. I guess like there's yeah. loadability. There's I don't know. There's fucking heaps of different ways you can categorize different squats or whatever. But all at the end of the day, I'm trying to get this person to do a squat. And in, in my head, I have a uh, a picture of like what a squat should look like, the boxes that a squat should tick, the what the muscles that should be felt in a squat, whatever. And then I'm going to try and find the right entry point for that person. 
So it might be under a bar because mm-hmm. they can just do that. They, you know, I, we've used him as a bunch of examples on this podcast before, but Bong, when he first rocked up here in the gym, uh, he trained at a BFT in the past. In the back of my head, I was thinking, probably not going to do the world's best squatter. He's probably been put through, you know, zero rest circuits with squats and, and taught to just do them as fast as he possibly can yep. without any regard for technique. Walks in, hits a fucking pitch a perfect squat, back squat, ass to grass, like literally nailed it, built for a little bit in a way. So like for him, if if I was looking at him and looking at his goals, which were powerlifting at that time and assessing him, that would be a really good place to start. Yeah, and then straight, I can start straight to, onto the back squat. Start to apply intensity, start to apply volume on that and start to, to work out where he's going to lay in those ranges. But for most people, you chuck a bar on their back and they're just going to be uncoordinated as hell. They're already gonna, falling forward. Yeah, falling forward or arching their back really bad or only doing half squats or you know, a combination of all this stuff just doesn't feel right to them, doesn't feel comfortable, doesn't look comfortable, doesn't just doesn't work. And then, then we're going to find whether it's a, a front squat, safety bar squat, goblet squat, machine squat, fucking anything. We're going to find a, some lunge variations. Usually, a combination of these be, exercises yeah, over the week, which are going to different things. You're going to attack it in different, attack the problem in different ways. Uh, we're going to apply to this person and go and, and to be able to move them closer to the to the archetype of what we want to squat to be. Mm. So, I mean, <laughs> that's a long winded way of how. I, I, and like I said, just off the top of my head, and I'm sure there's more criteria to run down there. There's so many more. There's so much more criteria, and I think we can also summarize it down to like that individual as well is like you know what are some things like to them right there's so people come in and they have a perception they want to do powerlifting or whatever that might be their mm. goals we also need to take into consideration like for them like does it feel good like what do they want to do like what do they think they're going to get the most out of Sometimes what are they, they, what are they already too, right? good at like as you mentioned you tell someone to squat they go straight away and barbell squat which mm. is a very unnatural movement for most people to have a weight on your back on top of your spine which is essentially trying to push you forward and you're trying to resist it to stand up and things like that Mm. it's very unnatural for most people but if i was to turn around and say to someone all right cool i want you to hold this dumbbell and sit on that bench yeah they're already they're already straight away the squat pattern will improve yeah and And usually they'll have preconceived ideas of what things are is limiting them i think like they'll go like oh my, my ankle back, mobility. I can't do my back squat. Yeah, exactly. And, and then you're like, why can't you? Why can't you do it? And like, oh, because my ankle mobility, or my hip mobility, or my whatever mobility, or my you know pinching at the front of my hips. Or- it's funny you say this. I had someone come in last week, two weeks ago. Sorry for a technique session. And when he first reached out to me, he said, "I can't back squat. My knees have hurt for years. Mm. He's been training for over ten years. He goes, I cannot back squat. My knees always hurt every time I do it. I'm limited by this. I'm limited by this. Like we're going to need the three pack of technique sessions just to get through my squat <laughs> within yep. 15, 20 minutes. And this is a kid who, as soon as he walked in, not a kid, sorry, he's older than me. He's a bloke who walked in and within five minutes, I realized this bloke squats ass to grass perfectly. Mm. And he, all I needed to do was adjust his feet slightly. And all of a sudden he didn't have bad ankle mobility. It was just his feet were too externally rotated. So he's, the way in which his body was trying to move, Just jamming up. Yeah, his knees were turned all the way out. They wanted to come in to allow himself to sit. So all of a sudden, that's why his knees it could have been one of the reasons. But that's you know the, a lot of force going through the knees in an angle that they're not really happy with. The ankles feel jammed up because you're trying to move them forward whilst t- turning them to the side and things like that. And we just adjusted a couple of things. Yeah, hit a PB, hundred kilos for that two. Happens to advanced lifters too. No pain whatsoever. Yeah. No pain, no residual pain over the next few days in his knees, ankles, anything. Everything was quote unquote fixed. Yeah. And then, it's a, then it's a programming thing from that. Now it's a programming. Yeah. Intensity. How are we, how are we going to build on that? Um, how are we going to capitalize on that momentum? And then he how can came. We replicate that good squat. Exactly. Know, consistently over time. He came in and then did deadlifts with me, which again, similar sort of story. I can't deadlift. My back hurts. I've never been able to do it without back pain. I can't do this. I can't do that. And I was like, <laughs> okay, cool. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Let's just run through in a safe environment. We'll dial it back if we need to. Comes in, his best ever deadlift was 80 kilos and he came in and pulled 150 kilos off the floor. Yeah, nice. Almost picture perfect technique. Yeah. Same, and it just came sort of thing, just little similar tweaks. thing, just a couple of little tweaks, like nothing crazy. There wasn't as if I reinvented everything. I'm yep. a big uh, believer in when I get people to come in and do technique sessions with me, I see how they move first yep. so I can meet them where they're at. Instead of me just being like, Okay, before we start, I want you to do this, 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 and this, and this, and then yeah. all of a sudden, 
they're overthinking the fuck out of it. So they shit the bed on their technique. Mm -hmm. When if I just watched them move the first time, I could have just been like, oh, sick, let's just try this. Well, Small adjustment. Yeah, that, that's an example of where the exercise might be right for them and you've made a technique adjustment or you know positional adjustment, a cueing thing or whatever to get them to, to take advantage of that exercise and be able to do that exercise. Absolutely. Some people walk in, they'll say, they'll say those things. Uh, we, I don't fully 100% believe them a lot of the time because we, we again, we, we, said, we said before, we talk ourselves into holes uh, and stuff. So, you know, I assume everybody, unless there's a, there's a deep injury history or something can do these things. Um, they just might not be ready for it yet. So if that's the goal is to be able to do a back squat or to be able to do a conventional deadlift or whatever it is, sure. We're going to try it because it's, at the end of the day, this is a skill that you have to just kind of like work out and, and work out with the technique, but they might not be ready for it as well. But there, yeah. are, there are people where you give them a few cues, you try a few different things, and it's like you're just not, you're just not getting it. Whether it's, whether it's a, a, you know, you've, you've screwed it up for so long, or been making a mistake for so long, or previous injury history, or, or whatever it is. But something, you know, you've ingrained some bad habits, and we really need to get out of it. So it also just come down to some people just have a really bad proprioception and understanding of where their body is in space. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's, yeah, I there's a few different things. A huge thing to highlight is that like. Sometimes they're just not ready for it yet, yeah. but it doesn't mean they're not ever going to be ready for it. Because I think as, especially within powerlifting specification and things like that, people who might want to be quote unquote a powerlifting coach, if they have someone come into them and they're like, well, they have to do SBD. Mm. And then this person's squat is just atrocious. And you kind of just like, don't have the tools in the toolbox to be able to uh, yeah, adjust it or it. And yeah. it's just trying to, dial in and go hard on that yeah and then all of a sudden you just double down on terrible technique yeah well you can make it terrible you can make a maybe not a terrible technique but you can make a, a definitely a subpar technique strong still just by doing it absolutely lot. you can you know and the more exposure can, to things over time your body's gonna have to adapt and that's where those ingrained habits can become like a little bit harder to reverse yeah and so yeah with those sort of people that would be where an exercise selection approach would be ideal uh as in you know, they, they can't do that right. And you've tried a couple of different things, but they can do. You, know, you give them a front squat like yourself at the moment. And perhaps, you know, again, they might suck at it to start with, but like they can pick that up a little bit quicker and, and it's going to like force them into into the patterns that they should be. And they're going to get that over time. And it might be an exercise that's uh, just more suitable to learn the pattern. Because like I said, squat's a squat at the end of the day. Like it's, mm. it's, a similar pat it's similar enough between them, even though in powerlifting we like to talk like they're completely different. Uh, it's a similar enough pattern that, that it might be better off and then you can build some volume, build some intensity over time, get better at it, get stronger at it. And then it's going to at least have some ability to, I want to say transfer, but it, it, I just feel like that word is a little weird, but like it's going to teach you to move better, to get into certain ranges. I think to just it works move for better understanding. As it, yeah, to move better. Yeah. yeah. And then and then all of a sudden, like when you go back to the other one, you can apply some of those learned habits or, or abilities that you've gained uh, into that into that slightly different movement pattern. Yeah. And if I had a person that came in and it was like that, uh, it's not a one or the other in terms of, okay, like they suck at back squats and we're just not going to do those and we're going to do front squats because they can do those. That's definitely a, a, you know, part, of, a the piece part of it. I'm, I'm, I, you can tell me your opinion on this, but like I'm still going to give them back squats, uh, even if it's just a low volume, low intensity, or maybe it's a tempo. Um, whatever it is, I'm still going to make it heavy enough and challenging enough to, for them to fuck it up. But uh, I'm going to give them a, a, a bit of a bite into those things still, just purely because it is a skill and it is something that if you practice it, it it's probably going to get slightly better over time. Mm. Whilst this other thing chips away at some of your old habits and, and uh, puts you in different ranges, builds strength in different positions, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. So yeah, you can absolutely do both at once as well. Yeah, I think 100% you can do both at once. I've definitely had times where maybe not so much with the squat for me. Mm. An example of this that I would probably use more primarily would be something like a deadlift. Um, so someone who may be the conventional deadlifter or a sumo deadlifter, vice versa, whatever yeah, one it yeah. is. And they're like, okay, cool. I want to try sumo or yeah. I want to try conventional. I'll have, generally speaking, due to the fact that they're fairly new to the other particular movement, I will generally have their main lift might yeah. still be the same yep 
and they'll just have their other lift ticking over in the background or might switch it around depending on which one we're trying to focus on the most. And for me, I find that that works quite well because they're not necessarily going too far away from one mm. or the other, but they both have a fairly similar carryover effect. Like we've had this discussion. Similar before. muscle groups. That. Similar muscle groups, yep. similar setup. Like it's the same principles apply. You want to set your feet comfortably. You want to be able to take the slack out of the bar. You want to create yeah. a lot of tension. Like there's, Still there's quite a yep. lot of similar similar aspects to it, way more than people might think looking at them. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I've also had people doing the same thing. Where well, that's I've had more them, of an intermediate, like advanced lifters swapping between them. Yeah, I've had someone do, you know, they might start off with some squats and then we have an interiorly loaded squat yep. as their main squat. So it could be a high a front squat or a safety bar or something like that something that's going to teach them that pattern. And then their secondary squat is exactly that, is like a, for, just a high bar. For a deadlift, rather than the example you use, which is more of a, somebody who already knows how to do one of them. Fairly, yeah, yeah. The other example uh, for a complete beginner with this exercise selection uh, criteria for a deadlift might be uh, an example you might see in the wild uh, a bit more, might be like somebody can't do you know, a, a barbell deadlift very well. So they'll go and do, uh, or somebody will go and tell them to do a trap bar deadlift because a trap bar deadlift, uh, I guess the argument for a trap bar deadlift would be it's a little bit easier to learn as in like you literally just, it's, you know, it's already kind of balanced. What you do is kind of like do a leg press and it's, it's pretty easy to pick up, which means that your intensity, your volume, your other things can be a lot higher from the start and kind of start to quote unquote overload you or, you know, you can, you can build muscle uh, maybe a little bit easier with a variation like that than rather than the, than the, the barbell one, which you haven't got technique down and your technique's going to be the limiting factor in that yep. particular lift. Now, I don't think it's as cut and dry as just like, uh, you know, in that instance, a trap by deadlift is better for that person because again, like learning new skills, learning new positions, learning to just, you know, control your center of mass is a fucking fundamental thing. So I don't want to take that away from somebody. No, absolutely. I, I, I don't think we should take the trap by either, either put them both in there together or, or you could even argue that for a beginner, you, you, you know, chucking in a, uh, keeping a conventional deadlift in or keeping a barbell deadlift in as their, as their skill movement might teach them awareness, coordination, all that stuff. And then, and then you can do a leg press, which is going to grow their legs or an RDO or something yeah. like that. You know what I mean? So like, it's, uh, yeah, I think two people will go like, oh, this person's not like quote unquote ready for that. Let's, let's give them something easier. Whereas in a lot of cases, I'm just like, how about fucking teach them how to do it? And, uh, you know, they can get better at that movement. I think it definitely comes down to sometimes there's they two, just, two ways to look at that. There, I think there's a, yeah, there's, I think there's a few ways to look at it because sometimes it can literally come down to just embrace the suck. Yeah. yeah. Like just sometimes you kind of have to, like I said, I'm not giving, it's not going to take away your opportunity to push hard because it's just no. like this one first exercise. And then after we go jump on a leg press or whatever, fucking yeah, 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 absolutely. And that's where I'm like a big fan of sometimes like some people just need to learn how to do it. Yeah. So if you were to take, say, for example, I'll use the front squat example. So if I was to turn around, I specifically remember messaging James and saying, I suck at front squats. Can I swap this to a safety bar? Yeah. And his response to me was, <laughs> no. Oh, no, sorry. I hate, oh, sorry. I said, I hate front squats. Yeah. Can we do safety bar? He goes, no, you suck at front squats. That's why we're doing front squats. And you probably hate them because you suck at them. I, I, exactly that. I yeah. hate them because I have not spent any time doing them. I don't. Most people I don't that hate enjoy a particular it as a lift movement. is because they suck at it, not because yeah. of any particular... And I knew I sucked at it. That's yeah. why I was just like, well, I'm never going to do this because I suck at it. Yeah. Why would I bother when I can just go back squat, which I enjoy, or SSB, which I enjoy? Yeah, which if you're a bodybuilder or something, that that makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah, and but even from a powerlifting in this, perspective. Yeah, even in powerlifting, you, 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 could, you could justify that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I think you could... Like, I'm not saying you're, you're, like, your thought pattern in that, I don't think is particularly like wrong, quote-unquote wrong. I was hiding from it though. I was trying to avoid doing something hard because I knew it would be hard. Yeah, but the argument of like, I wanted to do a back squat, I wanted to do a safety bar squat. I think there's validity to that as well. But if you're in a deep, look at your exact position, you're in a super deep off season, you don't have a comp for a long time. It's a good chance super to learn Super deep new deficit skills. as well. So for me at the moment, yeah, it could also be, yep. it's a limiter because straight away. A good limiter. Yep. It's a good limiter because if I'm, you know, I'm balls deep in a deficit, like yep. nearly six kilos down. Yeah. If we were to then go and start doing back squats, which I'm relatively confident in doing, yeah, you can load and I can do them to quite a high level, the fatigue, like stimulus to fatigue ratio, the trade off to that's not worth just it. Just not worth it at yeah, this yeah. point in time. Whereas if we spend a little bit of time with a lower level front squat that mm. I'm pretty shit at, but over time 
getting better at that pattern will definitely carry over to a better back squat pattern. Yeah. Because they're similar enough to drive enough of an adaptation that it's going to have a positive effect. But then as you said, right, like I go and flog myself on the leg press or I flog myself yeah, at the yeah, moment yeah. with walking lunges and like yeah. that's where the work comes in. But I'm also then getting the skill based work in as well, which Yeah, you're not hiding from the work. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah. Which is I think a big positive thing that people need to do is like embrace the suck. Don't hide from it. Yeah. And when you're a beginner in the gym, like they're gonna suck at most of these movements. Yeah. So like you're just going, giving people fuck. What, that's why when I write beginner programs, typically, uh, you know, without looking at exercises themselves and looking at patterns, like I'm trying to give people exposure to a lot of different patterns at a lot of different times. My cousin actually hit me up and said, uh, can you write me a program? And he's like a, he's a younger, young kid, um, mid teens, something like that. Uh, the typical time when most guys are getting into the gym these days, not my day, but fuck, you know, how it is now. And, uh, he's like, he's a bit of a shy kid. Um, and I guess like uh, from where, from f- the roundabout conversation uh, that I got told for it, he didn't really like, wasn't a huge fan of doing like big compound lifts, like using a bubble. He's like, no, I'll just go, if, can you write me a program to, uh, of just like, you know, mainly machine work and I'll just go jump around machines and, and get a good pump, maybe grow a little bit. And I don't think that's a bad thing, but I ended up writing and did a detailed explanation. So he understood why, but um yeah, I end up chucking in a bunch of uh, you know, regressed, you know, achievable patterns, squats, deadlifts, bench presses, uh, overhead work, I don't know, chin-ups. Different, I think, I don't know, I don't remember the program exactly, but a lot of these different patterns where there was a skill component that he wasn't going to be great at, and I'm completely aware of that, and I just like just layered them over the, over the, over the course of a week, multiple times. So he had exposure multiple times to lots of different patterns, lots of different ways of moving. Uh, and, uh, he has done support and stuff like that. So he does have some level of coordination. And then I just kind of, like said in the video, just like, just, you know, it's going to suck week one. You're going to feel like absolute gumby under these things, but you're going to get better at them. Trust me. And then, you know, within, within a month, two months, three months, you're going to feel like you own the gym. Mm. You're going to feel like fucking, like the, the 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 whole gym is open to you now. You can go and do anything. You can jump on the internet and download old you know, bodybuilding dot com program and run it. Like you can feel confident in any of these worlds. Whereas if you if I did what he wanted me to, which is just, just throwing on machines and avoid the hard learning stuff, that's all you know. So like heaps of the programs out there. If he goes on fucking starting strength and he starts to like hit up the five by fives, oh, that program's not available to you because you can't do fucking some of those movements. Yep. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're limited. Now you're, now you're, you can only do a, a, a very small yeah, like group of programs out there. And all of these other lifts, like your compounds, your things like that. It's not as if you're just working on that. Like yep. it, it's not as if a squat is just a squat. Like, with a barbell squat to any degree. Oh, you learn to flex your hips, dip. extend your hips and exactly. bend your you, knees. You learn to work as a whole system. You learn to control your center of mass. You learn to be able to brace and resist force going down. Like, you know, we're doing anti-rotation. We're doing anti-flexion, et cetera. Like, it's a whole range of different things that, like, if you really, really want to break it down into the nitty-gritty. What are your thoughts on people who, like, I know we said, like, the mobility thing, but people that are like, I'm not built for that. Like, if I, like... You get some chick that has like longer legs or whatever, and she's like, "Everyone's built for not, everything." Not built for squats. Well, no, not you know. Some people are better. Off, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like no. you can just nail a squat first go. These people, like, yes. obviously, there's a much steeper learning curve. Yeah, they've, they've probably, got longer femurs, and they have to sit back further, and things their like squats that. Squats don't look as as comfortable. Like, yeah, but yeah, I don't know. there's always a way to find that entry point, though. Like we keep, we always come back and I know we always talk about it is finding the entry point. And I know we mentioned it with relation to this yeah. is like find, meet where the person's the at. Yeah, yeah. Find what we want it to look like long-term. Yeah. Find where they're at. Work out the way to marry the two over the long-term mm-hmm. and just sort of work your way back. So like for someone who comes in and they're like, oh, I'm not really built to squat. Like they come in, they're quite tall. They might have like long legs, a little bit more lanky kind yeah. of thing. And To like, me, it's just such really a limiting squat. belief. You know what I mean? They've like, already told you, themselves they can't do it before they come here. Even even if you even if you aren't built for it, and you're never going to be the world's best squatter, like you're never going to be a fucking champion. But just like I'm never going to be the you know great at swimming because I'm a, a short, stocky, fucking wide build. Like I just don't rotate. I just kind of fridge. Yeah. So and and I've always been a little bit like that, right? Yeah. So I was never going to be fucking Thorpey, right? Yeah, and I'm never going to be a world class powerlifter because I'm just <laughs> for me yeah. to do so, I'd but, have to be. Whatever, there are, there are limiting factors, but they're, 
that and people are going to be built for certain things, but that doesn't stop you from learning it and jumping in and giving it a go. And, and for us as coaches to kind of like expose you to things that, that, you know, because it's, yeah, it's going to make you more confident. It's going to, it's going to make you come up with ways to make them work. And all these things in my eyes, longer term, uh, pay off. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I think it can be fun too, because it's like, especially as a coach, like I don't think there's anything more mundane than just the same shit for every person. Like it's, it's fun to come up with like cool little innovative ways to get someone to move better yeah, or to get someone to maybe even see themselves even from like, their end, like just the, just, yeah, just like, learning to, to actually do it and overcome that limiting well, belief, overcoming that barrier. That's what powerful. I mean. Like seeing, seeing people achieve things they never thought possible yeah. is one of the most rewarding things as a coach. And once a person starts to realize, Hey, you know what? Maybe I have told myself a couple of things that I'm starting to see now aren't true. And then all of a sudden they start to build a hell of a lot more confidence in the gym and with their training and things like that. And they're like, they start to reduce those limiting beliefs because yeah. they've already had to overcome them mm -hmm. to get to where they are now. So it's like, once you do that and you can start to build on that momentum and generate more confidence and build all of that, it makes happier, healthier people, yeah. happier, healthier athletes. Mm -hmm. And then when they want to specify what they want to do, it, they're just like, okay, cool. I can do this a bit more now. You know, they've got that confidence built up. Yep. Yeah. I think that's a good way to, to, to wrap this up. And I think a good little summary of that is for the people out here, for the athletes uh, who aren't coaches, just embrace sucking at stuff yeah. and getting better at it. Uh, especially cause it's not going to take much away from your program. You can still, you can add that on top. You're going to be limited by your ability to do it. Yep. So the, you know, fucking, you don't even need to count that volume or however you're justifying effort in a program and go and smash yourself with other stuff. And coaches, don't be afraid to throw people in the deep end. I've definitely been there before where I'm a little bit scared to give people stuff they suck at because I'm afraid that they will hate it or whatever. But most people just suck thing, uh, just hate things because they suck at it. And when yeah. they start to see improvements, they'll, they'll start to, you know, at least enjoy it to a little bit and maybe they won't, but that's okay. You can change it. But as long as you have a, a reason for them, yeah. get them to understand it. Fuck. If you do your job properly as a coach, uh, it, it'll be fine. Yeah. Um, Coaches give explanation. Clients be willing to learn. You've come to a coach for yes. a reason. Yes. Make the most of your communication is, is yeah. key. All right. Perfect. That's it. Done. Catch it. Thank you for listening to the Nexus unloaded podcast. Be sure to jump on our website to find details on everything mentioned in the podcast today, plus information on our coaching, mentoring, and gyms based in the Gold Coast and Townsville. Make sure you follow us on our Instagram for any updates on what we are currently doing, and we'll see you all in the next episode.